precepts as the ground to accomplish all the roots of virtue are the basis of enlightenment. The precepts are the fundament of proper liberation and supreme body. Before entering Nirvana, the Buddha warned his disciples to uphold the precepts. All of you bhikkhus, after my Nirvana, should reverence and honor the Pratimoksha, like finding a light in darkness or a poor person obtaining a treasure. It is your great teacher and is no different from my actual presence in the world. During the presence of the Buddha, if someone wished to adopt monastic life, the Buddha would simply say, Come, Bhikkhu, with beard and hair falling off automatically. He was done with Kasaya to become as Ramanera. Monks shave their heads on 4th, 14th and 24th of each lunar month. On the way of wandering, they often help each other to shave. The Buddha was a crown prince when he renounced the household life. He cut off his hair with a sharp sword and pledged, as I shave off my hair, may all living beings eradicate afflictions and karmic hindrances. Hair is a symbol of afflictions and karmic obstacles. A worldly person saves for beautification. Monks shaving their heads is the Dharma to eliminate pride and arrogance. The Buddha shaved head with a sword himself, as there is nobody in the threefold great thousand world realm deserving to shave the Buddha's head. In addition, to inspire concrete faith of all beings in the crown prince, cutting off his hair for renouncing household life, and to extinguish his father's evil mind of slaughtering the person who shaved the crown prince's head. Applicants wishing to become a novice at the Bay Monastery would be tonsured and ordained by the abbot after a minimum of one year's scrutiny to become a member of the Sangha. Particularly, solemn tonsure ceremony is held annually in the Bay Monastery. Applicants who pass the scrutiny will take a shower, change for a set of clean clothes and attend a repentance ceremony the night before the renunciation. The next day, in the meditation hall of Bhikkhu, the abbot sits properly in the shrine of Bhimalakirti. The monk assembly conducts the karma to decide whether to permit the applicants becoming a member of Sangha so as to ensure the quality of the Sangha. Lay disciples also come to participate and rejoice in the ceremony. The applicants await the result outside. The karma meeting, which only bhikkhus who abide strictly by the precepts can attend and be absolutely forbidden from non-bhikkhus to attend or hear of. The final result, passed unanimously with considerable deliberation and caution, reflects the solemnity of precepts and harmony of Sangha. After the ceremony of karma, 
the qualified applicants go to the Dharma Hall for tonsure. Invite the ordination master, an Archarya. for the parents for farewell. Change of role. In order that Acharya could shave their heads, leave a few hairs on the top due to the precepts. The master ordains the applicants through tonsure. Disciple's name. After tonsure, take the ten precepts, bestowed with alms bowl, and become as Ramanera formally. If one family member renounces to become a monk, his family fellows of nine relations will all become the celestial beings. (laughs) 
in accordance with the Buddhist scriptures and rules, monks must gather for a collective recitation of precepts every half month. The 15th and the 30th of each lunar month, monks recite the precepts and repent. Precepts reciting must be undertaken even on the way of wandering. Monks examine daily behaviors in accordance with the precepts by reciting them. If violating the precepts, one should repent in front of the others. Every monk must attend the recitation to ensure the purity of the Sangha for living together in harmony. Recitation should be taken at a place away from settlements and lay folks, unseen or not heard by anyone from the great boundary. Fix the great boundary prior to the recitation. Bhikkhus and novices recite precepts in two separated locations, which are unseen or unheard by outsiders. Bhikkhus recite the Bhikkhus precepts and the Brahma Net Bodhisattva precepts. Novices recite the Ten Precepts and the Sutra on the Buddha's Bhikkhus teaching. Regardless of the circumstances, precept recitation must be undertaken. Reciting the precepts in the wilderness. Reciting the precepts at night. Reciting the precepts under a bridge. Reciting the precepts in marshland. Reciting the precepts on the top of a mountain. Uposata comes from Sanskrit, which means dwelling in purity, purifying the three karmas and dwelling in the precepts. A monk asked the Buddha, how long does the Dharma of the past Buddhas last? The Buddha answered, the Dharma doesn't degenerate as long as pure bhikkhus recite the precepts. Dismiss the great boundary after reciting precepts. Disciples of the Buddha renounced household lives, dwelled in mountains and aranya, wear rugged robes, lived on alms round, and ignored the five desires. Rugged robes are dharma garments that are soon from abandoned as material or cloth offered by lay people. Wearing rugged robes is one category of Dutanga practices. Rugged robes is one of the four requisites, the fundamental doctrine of Buddhism. Monks don't cling to the good things from the secular world any longer. All those good things are elusive, a type of ignorance. Mending a worn out cloth is eradicating the ignorance. Wearing rugged robes conforms to the way and is a priceless treasure. The Kasayas, which are cut into pieces are the robes of blessings because they can eradicate ignorance. Mm -hmm. 
being dragged does not conform to the trend of the secular world, but it conforms to the trend of enlightenment and non-discord. Attaching happiness and affliction to clothing is ignorance. On the way of wandering, haystacks and cornstalks are good places which are full of warmth and the smell of countryside. However, nobody would like to enjoy for a moment over there because they wear good garments. They actually lose the ease, tranquility and purity of sitting on the ground and lying on the haystack. One of the four requisites is in abandoned medicines. The original meaning of abandoned medicine is to take abandoned medicinal waste as medicine. Nowadays, the medical care of monks is guided by the principle of not asking for help from others. Accepting medical treatment when monks encounter illness is allowed and demonstrated by the Buddha. It is allowable so long as the medicines are not extracted from animals or developed by harming other creatures. Medical and pharmacy rooms are available in the monastery and there are monastic doctors providing medical treatment during the wandering. A monk demonstrates how to do the cleansing. Soup. Cleansing bottle. Jing Chi 等到第三遍的时候这个要倒水哦要倒水这个要又把它倒倒死了哦倒死倒死了以后把它一叠起来哎这么再擦再擦一遍再擦一遍等第四遍也是这样把它倒死了以后用这个干净往这一叠它就再
，那就是垃圾，完了再洗七遍手。因为佛在世时候呢，都是用的那种土啊，准备擦这次，他不用纸，但是咱们现在就是，因为有纸了，就有方便地方，就用不着那些东西了。嗯、呃，这个不管是在家人还是出家人都应该用的，都是对身心健康是非常有好处，也是非常健康的。洗手呢，要用肥皂和水冲洗五遍，就是打一遍肥皂，用清水冲洗一遍，打一遍肥皂冲洗一遍，一共冲洗五遍。五遍冲洗完了以后，再用清水冲洗两遍，把这个肥皂水冲洗干净，完了再漱口，这样的话才比较清净。可以还有的送咒，送咒呢可以更加清净。这个是在方便时。必须注意的，就是说我们在行走中唯唯独的换鞋，现在换不了，因为出来带鞋多不方便，所以怎么办？这个鞋在示范上殿堂的时候都要重新刷洗，这才可以，才能上殿堂。回到寺院以后，或是半路上殿堂呢，都要把这个鞋都要冲洗干净，哎，才能上殿的。或是换掉，这个不光是个人的身体上的卫生的需要，而且更主要的是心理的清净的需要。如果我们洗七遍以后，这个心里就特别的清净，而且更容易入道。外道呢，一个是特别脏、埋汰，这也是佛事所不允许的。另外呢，外道有过于干净，在佛在世时候有冲洗到一百遍，没有必要，而且呢，完全他不知道。什么清净？所以说呢，佛有大智慧，而制造这种清净方法，对我们修行是非常有利的。洗手的时候，得诵咒来加持，你这个心里更清净一些。一水观掌，当愿众生得清净手，受持佛法，俺祖家拉也烧，俺祖家拉也烧，俺祖家拉也烧喝。诵咒的目的就是让心里更清净一些。漱口的时候也有记子，念“漱口莲心净，闻水百花香，三叶恒清净，同佛往西方”。安汉安汉说，不但身清净，心也清净。一般你你要是他没有修行的话，就这么做，他的感觉不大。一特别有修行人，马上感觉这个入道这个心情特别清凉，啊、嗯，特别清凉，这个很殊胜的。